Hello book people, PT here. I'm here today to discuss two really classic crime books from the 1930s. Really two of the probably most famous, most classic crime novels of all time. I've got Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None, and I've got James M. Kahn's The Postman Always Rings Twice. Let's start with And Then There Were None. So I received this book, we did a, a book exchange, Secret Santa kind of thing that Ben from Ben on Books hosted and I was paired up with Mary and Mary was kind enough to send me this book. So thank you very much, Mary, and thank you, Ben, for hosting that. But it was really good timing because I've been wanting to read some Agatha Christie and also I had The Postman Always Rings Twice getting ready to read on my TBR so it made for a good pairing. So I read this one first. And this is just such a classic book. It was published in 1939, and uh, it's it's touted on the back as the world's best-selling mystery. And Agatha Christie's biography is funny. It says, Agatha Christie is the most widely published author of all time, outsold only by the Bible and Shakespeare. So that's pretty good, uh, res pretty good to have on your resume. And then There Were None has been published under a number of different titles. The original title is highly racist, and I'm not going to say it. But apparently it's based on a British folk song that I hope is not a commonly sung song these days. But when it was published in the United States, it's been called And Then There Were None, as it is currently. It's also been published as Ten Little Indians in the United States. Even though I was reading this for the first time, the story felt very familiar. And I think it's because this has become so ingrained in our society, uh, just such a standard story now because of this book. It's in a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, a lot of different... Uh, when you think mystery, you almost think of this kind of scenario. Basically, in the story, these ten people go to this island, this house on this island. Um, for various reasons, they've been drawn there. They don't... Uh, they turn out to be all false reasons. When they get there, they're kind of trapped on this island, the ten of them, and slowly, one by one, they start being murdered. And you figure out quickly that the killer is one of these ten people. And as the number of people diminishes on the island, your list of suspects is also just diminishing. So it really does a great job of racking up the tension. And I think what makes this kind of unique and pretty cool is the fact that there's no like detective, there's no Sherlock Holmes or Miss Marples or something like that in here who's kind of figuring it out. You as the reader are left to figure out who the killer is throughout the story. I mean, the characters are trying to figure it out, but there's no like mastermind among them who's really awesome at figuring out uh, the mystery. It's a very fair mystery. It's very surprising at the end, at least it was to me when I found out who the killer was and all the pieces lined up very well. So if you're looking for just a great mystery book, uh, look no further than this one. There was a few things in here that felt pretty dated. One of them was just the way they attribute the dialogue. It would say like, Lucy says, colon, and then there'd be a new line and then the quotation mark and the quote would be on a separate line. So that was a little different. The other thing that kind of, that really jumped out at me is kind of dating this as a book from yesteryear is the way that they treated the servants. So eight of the people who come to the island are um, kind of guests and two of them are servants. And right away, the other people on the, the other guests are like, oh my gosh, there's only two servants for the eight of us. This is crazy. How's this going to work out? And then a little bit of spoiler, I guess, but the, the two servants are married and one of them is murdered. I won't say which one, but the other guest's reaction to that is like, man, now there's only one to take care of us. And the other servant's spouse has just been murdered. And then the people are like, whoa, that one's going to have a hard time putting together dinner. Kind of a funny thing. But overall, this is a great book. I loved the mystery. It worked very well for me. Highly recommend it. The other one, The Postman Always Rings Twice by James M. Kahn. This one felt a lot more modern in the way it was written. Um, it's not a mystery, though. It's more of a, a crime drama, I guess you could say. More of a crime thriller, probably, is how it would be billed today. Uh, it's the story of this drifter who goes to this diner and gets a job at the diner and very quickly starts an affair with the diner owner's wife, who also works in the kitchen. Like, the minute they see each other, they're like going at it. Uh, and then they quickly decide that they're going to murder the owner of the diner. And all that happens in like the first 20 pages. It's a very short book overall. This this volume is like 187 pages that I have, but the print is pretty large The uh, and the spacing between lines is like huge. So I would guess this is probably like a 40 or 50 thousand word book. You could easily read this in a couple sittings. I think what makes this cool is it's told in the first person, it's told from the point of view of the drifter. So it's not at all a whodunit, it's like a, is he going to do it? And is he going to get away with it? How is he going to do it? It's like more of a crime, we're following the criminal, and it makes for a really interesting story. The narrative voice is very strong in this. 
And when this book came out, it's it was quite controversial, I, I, I guess, from the way it deals with sex and violence. It was actually banned in the city of Boston, which there's not really like any graphic sex or, or graphic violence in this at all, but it does deal with those topics very frankly and from the point of view of a criminal. So maybe that was part of the reason is that it you know, our narrator, our quote-unquote hero, is a criminal trying to do horrible things. So maybe that was part of it as well. But I love the way this was written, the writing style and the narrative style. This was brilliant and uh, just a highly enjoyable read. There's a lot of really laugh-out-loud funny uh, bits of dialogue and bits of narration as well as just some chilling things in here. So that's The Postman Always Rings Twice. So those are two crime books, two classics. I highly recommend both of them. If you're at all interested in crime fiction, I think you couldn't go wrong with either of these. I hope you check them out. If you have read them, let me know what you think. If you have not read them, go for it. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.